Hi, I'm Chad from Chad DIY, and today we're gonna to discuss how to start a woodworking business for very little money. We're gonna go through the tools you need, what you should build, how to market it, and how to grow it. So let's get started. All right, I got all the tools and materials you're gonna to need to get started. Um, let's just go through them. So first we got a circular saw. So I, I have DeWalt, a lot of DeWalt tools. It doesn't matter the brand, really. Some are better, some are worse. Uh, most of mine are DeWalt. Um, great thing about a circular saw is you can use it to make long cuts, uh, you can cross cuts, angle cuts. Um, it's kind of a combination between a miter saw and a table saw, which eventually you're probably gonna want both if you get into woodworking. But this is a good kind of starter, not spend a ton of money um, to, to get you where you can cut all your, all your wood. And to go along with that, um, just a, a standard square, so when you're making cross cuts, just to keep everything nice and straight, it's, uh, it's hard to kind of freehand these perfectly straight. So get your, uh, get your square as well. Next up, uh, the drill. So a drill is, I think for power tools, this might be like the first power tool most, most people get. And very functional, you can drill through wood. You can also drive screws with it. A lot of people have impact drivers as well. They have, there's a lot of combo kits but this will uh, do both for you. So add that, add that to the little collection here. So circular saw, square, drill. Next up, this is a little bit more random, random tool, Craig jig. So the Craig jig, you might see infomercials on it. Basically it's a, kind of a big hunk of plastic, got, got a lever. I think they're about a hundred bucks, which I thought was kind of crazy for what, what you got. It took me the longest time to actually buy one. And then when I actually bought one, it's, they're, they're amazing. They, you gotta have one, really. So I, this isn't gonna be a video on how to use the Craig jig, but it's, it's pretty simple. You, you stick, your, stick your wood in there, and then you drill your pocket holes. And this is a great way for joining wood together. Um, it, it's, it's funny, you don't really think about how wood is joined, but there's, I mean, there's a lot of different options, but a lot of them aren't that simple. A lot of them use kind of, expensive tools and stuff to, to get a good strong joint. And pocket holes, you can't see the pocket holes, so you kind of have to kind of play with that a little bit, how you hide them, but they really form a nice strong joint. You could add glue as well. And so with, without even getting into the materials yet, these three, three guys right here, you can, you can build a ton of stuff. Just, just with this little group here. You don't have a ton of money invested and you can just build, um, build a lot of things. So we'll, we'll add that to the, the group, the Craig jig. And now we're getting on to the material side. And so the Craig jig, basically for dimensional lumber is what I use to build the furniture. Uh, you're using two by four, two by six, two by material, or you're using one by material, which is either one by is three quarter inch, Thickness, um, two by material is one and a half uh, inches thickness. So for the one by material, you use one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. And for the two by material, you use two and a half inch uh, pocket hole screws. So I used, I, when I was really getting into the furniture building, I bought them in boxes on Amazon. I don't know if it was thousands of screws. Cause these, these might be four or five bucks a box. Um, but yeah, you can buy them in, in bulk from Amazon. I'll provide a link there if you're, if you're interested. And uh, so that, these will add to the materials list. Next, uh, we just have some wood glue, um, type bond two. There's three, there's a regular, I don't know. Uh, I don't really have a preference. A lot of people use the three, but uh, yeah, just for, for indoor furniture, I don't think it, it matters a whole lot. Um, the two and the three are, the three for sure is exterior gray. This is interior exterior. So um, I don't think that matters all that much. Now for, for finishing of the furniture, I went with dark walnut. Now I'm not sure why I just chose that. I just went with dark walnut. I think I bought in a gallon at a time. So you could do a lot with dark walnut. The biggest complaint I got, almost the only complaint I got from um, people come and look at the furniture was they, they thought it was darker than, it, the pictures seemed lighter than when they actually got there. They saw, oh, it's darker. So I had, I had a few people pass on 
buying the furniture. I, I think that was almost the only reason someone didn't buy it when they actually came to the house is they thought this day was too dark. I would still recommend it. I guess most people were fine with the dark walnut. I don't know if there's maybe a more trendy color. I don't know. I just, I feel like that was, that was kind of neutral. And then to finish it off, I went with uh, clear semi-gloss uh, polyurethane. And usually I just do one coat. I don't know, you could do a couple coats, you could really sand it smooth. And, but a lot of it was just, uh, just time. I would try to get uh, each piece done in I guess four hours was, was kind of time frame. So if I really wanted to on a Saturday, I could do um, two pieces of furniture. And so that's just time-wise doing one coat of that, let it dry, then the next day um, finish it with polyurethane. So, and then finally, uh, tape measure. Most people probably have a tape measure. I don't know, that's, maybe that should be the first one. But this, maybe I'll throw in a pencil, you need pencil obviously, but this little group here, and this might be, I wanna say $250, $300 ish range. Maybe not the dual, maybe you're going to Ryobi or something, but you could probably buy this, this, this group. So think of initial investment, you start from, I have nothing, you find some way, get your $300, get this little pod there, and then we can move on to the next step and we can build a piece of furniture. So let's talk about that next. All right, now that we have all our tools, materials talked about, let's uh, move on to talking about what we're gonna build with these, how we're gonna make our money, how we're gonna start our uh, woodworking business. And so I suggest there's only three things to even consider building and selling to start off with. Uh, and that is, coffee tables, council tables, farmhouse tables, like dining room tables. And the reason I say that is like a lot of people, you'll see um, cutting boards, that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that those things don't sell, because I'm sure they do, but the margin getting going just isn't there. So if you're investing some tools and those, you probably have to invest in more tools. And what you can sell the product for is just if you're selling for $30 and you have $10 into it, you don't want to be trying to make 20 bucks at a time. You want to be making a couple hundred dollars at a time is what I always shot for. So, so that's why I, why I go with the coffee table, council table, and the farmhouse table. The main one I kind of settled on was the council table. Maybe in sofa table, I, I didn't even think I knew what a council table was until I started building them. The thing about the table that's behind like a couch or something, I'll provide pictures. Um, and the reason for that is the amount of material I needed for the money I could get for it. Coffee tables would probably maybe sell a little easier, but there was kind of a limit on when I was building like two by, furn two by four furniture is how I'd refer to it as, uh, you know, how much someone's going to spend on a coffee table. And there's coffee tables everywhere. You look on Craigslist, there's $40 coffee tables here and there. So trying to get that much money out of a coffee table, I'd try to get maybe 150, 160 bucks out of them, which they would sell, which was, which was fine. And they were 40, $50 of material and didn't take a ton of time to make. So you can make hundred bucks on a coffee table. But the council table, which I kind of settled on, that you could almost do double. You could 50, 60 bucks of material and you're selling it for the 250, 260, whatever range, 240, depending on uh, how fast you want to sell it. And depending on your uh, market as well, that, that can vary a lot too. So some you could sell for way more. There's going to be areas that um, you could, it sells for less too. So you kind of have to figure that out. Um, but with these tools, you can, you can build those. And the thing is with, for some reason, bigger items usually just sell for more. Like if you're building a, you know, a cutting board, there's small item, you know, like how much can you really sell that cutting board for? When you're building a, a big council table, like people expect to pay a little money for that and they're, all, they're fine with that. And so that's where you can start getting into your, your bigger profit margins. And once I started doing it, I just kind of started running with it where I would, I would build a few, sell a few, buy some more tools and just, uh, just carrying on and on. And so that, that's, I guess, the three that I would focus on. I never really got into the farmhouse tables. Those you can make even more money, but they're a lot more work. They're a lot more material and everything. And so that's my two suggestions, I guess. I'll, I'll scale it back. Our coffee tables and the council tables. Um, and now 
let's talk about marketing, how, to, how you actually sell them. All right, so you have your furniture made, you're ready to sell it. The two sites I would always use were Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Main one I always use was Craigslist, but that seems, Facebook seems to be a little, I don't know, easier to sell lately. But those are the two sites I recommend. As far as posting, multiple pictures are key, nice pictures, and have, them, have the furniture staged. So the console tables, I'd have it set up as a console table behind the sofa with pictures or whatever. And I'd also have it set up as a TV stand where a lot of people are entertainment console or whatever. The same table, a lot of people would use it. They'd set their TV, have the DVD player or whatever. So I'd have that set up in the pictures and I'd also have the sofa table set up in the picture so they can really visualize what it might look like in their house. As far as the posting, solid wood furniture, I'd always put that out there and make sure they knew it wasn't plywood or whatever. Also, I get questions, does it come from a smoke-free house? I, like random questions like that. So I make sure, you know, it's pet-free home, smoke-free home, brand new, handmade, just some of these keywords that makes people feel good about buying it. And I, you should have no trouble selling it. So if you have any questions on this video, on more about how I started in the woodworking business, uh, this has always been more of a side hobby for me. It's not my career or anything, but it's been, uh, it's been great. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below and we'll see you next time. Thanks.